Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. It is 5 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, January 22nd. And for the first time in a long time, we are starting right on time. Shout out to my guy Richie who did like six hours of driving today and was still up and ready to go, uh, ready to get after it. Richie, you guys had some, a, new, uh, a new family member join the uh, family today. How are you doing, man? We did. We uh, actually went up to Madison, Florida today to get a new... Uh, miniature docs in a female this time. So Franklin's got a little sister now. Maybe I'll bring her in at the end of the show. But she is two pounds, and my goodness, Ooh. the cutest thing I've seen in a long time. Very happy. How's your weekend been, man? It's been good. I feel like you're gonna enjoy some of the sleepless nights that I'm just now <laughs> getting back into with the kids getting a little bit older. Uh, so more power to you. But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> that that dog is adorable so i do have to say that you're you're spot on there um maybe for the end of the show harlan will we'll put some pressure on you but maybe by the end of the show we'll have a picture up at the uh of uh of charlie right charlie that's right we're, we're still deciding a middle name so we, we are the typical kidless married couple that just loves to have dogs so i think ward's a pretty good middle name i think um uh, yeah. i think that's like i don't know how you could get much better than that uh, if I can get it past the wife, we'll see. But, you know, ultimately, <laughs> she has the final say. Happy wife, happy life. TJ named our dog Charlie Ward. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, double fries, no slaw. Brought to you by Guthrie's in Tallahassee. You can visit both locations at 1818 West Tennessee Street and 2550 North Monroe. Do us a favor if you're in Tallahassee, which I will be this weekend. Excited to get up there and watch a couple of basketball games. Um, stop by Double Fry, uh, Stop by Guthrie's, either location. Again, Double Fries No Slaw, slaw is the way you should order. Um, if you're watching this, if you're listening, do us a favor and hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button, uh, share it to your social media, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Um, send it to your friend groups wherever you end up uh, chatting about the Knowles. Let's get some more people in here to talk about this weekend. Big recruiting weekend for Florida State. A lot of guys on campus, uh, a lot of people that we want to touch on, a lot of people that we want to talk about. Um, but before we do any of that, Richie, what's just your overall? I mean, we put some notes in that in the outline here. Is a top ten season going to maybe parlay itself into a top ten class? What are reasonable expectations for FSU this year? I'd love for some audience participation on this as well. While we start to get some people in here, we'll give a little bit of a recap on different guys that were on campus and some different thoughts. But, Richie, what are some expectations you got for this season's recruiting class? Yeah, I feel like we've given Mike a pass in recruiting, um, and rightfully so, right? 2020 COVID year, he couldn't even get kids on campus. He couldn't go visit kids. That was not going to be a good class. And then he's selling a three-win team, and then he's selling a five-win team. So now I think we'll see what his recruiting prowess really is Selling a 10-win team, coming off with top 10 finish, top 11 in the AP, I think this is a huge opportunity. Having guys like Cam on campus, my goodness, that looks like a growing man right there. Um, but yeah, the, this is the class for him to solidify that, you know, to, so to speak, check the last box as a head coach. That, yeah, he can recruit at the high school level too. He has something to sell right now. And if don't let us be LSU and start off on a hot streak next year, because then I think the expectation is a top 10 class minimum. If you lose that game and you bounce back, which I'm sure they would, I think top 12 has to be the floor this uh, for the 2024 class. How about you? Yeah, I think win or loss, you, you got to get, yeah, win or loss in that LSU game. I think you got to get top 10 this year. And that, that has to be, the expectation, and that's where you have to get to. Now, if they take a, for whatever reason, which I don't think they're going to take a small class by any means. I think we'll, we'll get to some draft talk here in a little bit, but I think they're going to take a pretty large class with, I mean, you just run down the list of names on your head right now. You know, Jordan Travis is going to be in his last year. Uh, Johnny Wilson, uh, I don't think Pittman will come back. I think Pittman will be done out of eligibility. Benson first, Fabo, name them all, man. They're, yeah. They're, you, they're all gone. <laughs> you've got a lot of guys. Yeah, Dent, Fabo, Verse, Bethune, Deloach. you got a lot of guys that are, you know, running out of eligibility. A big Meech, if he gets the waiver, um, you know, you, you're just you, – you've got – and there's a lot of other redshirt seniors, too, that have played a lot of years. I mean, Cypress is a one-year guy. Um, another transfer – 
Um, I don't know off the top of my head. You know, like guys like Edmund could play themselves into being pretty high draft picks and stuff. So yeah, I think you're, you've you got a, a good chance of being able to take a really large class. And so if you take 20 plus guys, then you certainly have to finish in the top 10. If you were taking a smaller class and you have a really high average, but finish at 12th or something, kind of the Clemson model, I don't think anybody's upset at that. But I do think the class needs to be pretty good. On campus, we mentioned this. Richie said his name, but we'll talk a little bit about him. Uh, Cam Davis. That that kid. Did you see the baseball picture? That's what we made the thumbnail was his baseball picture. So maybe uh, maybe people will jump in because of that, or maybe they won't. But uh, his baseball pictures were really, really cool. And I will say, Florida State recruits two-sport athletes better than anyone else. Yeah. Uh, and they just have for years. Like, that's not a new thing. That's not something that I think is uh, just, you know, oh, wow, now they're doing it. The way that they pull in two-sport athletes from Jameis all the way back to 93 when Charlie Ward was here and so many in between, right? Like, guys that run track, I know that's a pretty natural one. That one, you know, maybe doesn't shock too many people. But, yeah, the Cam one's on the screen now. Some of his baseball stuff with the boom box, the different stuff was really, really cool. And I love the way they re- recruit two sport athletes. I think it sets them apart. Uh, Camden Fryer is another one. A lot of people will remember that name, Matt Fryer's son. Um, obviously, the, the big catch that he had against Miami in '93. But the way that they recruit two sport athletes is is really special. And it's something that they don't do in a lot of places. Like a lot of places, will just tell kids up front, I, you know, no, you're not playing that here. A lot of people say that's the biggest reason we ended up getting Jameis back in the day was because he wanted to play baseball. I don't know if Cam or uh, Camden or any of these guys end up playing two sports at FSU or not. A lot of times guys do transition out of it. But the fact that we do recruit both of them and, and we use two pretty uh, pretty prestigious recruiters to do so in Link Jarrett over at the baseball team and Mike Norvell, who I think is developing and will develop into a pretty good recruiter, um, is, is pretty special. Thoughts on uh, recruiting two sport athletes, Rich? I love it. And like you said, a lot of football coaches, like a Nick Saban does not want his players to play baseball, basketball, run track, maybe run track it because that's a pretty natural, you know, transition from football. Um, you think of Jalen Ramsey, who was an all American at track and football, right? Uh, someone p- commented in the chat, Dion. Yeah. He played baseball, track and football at Florida state. Uh, Jameis Winston. I remember going to see them play the Yankees at, at, in Tampa. Yeah. yeah. And uh, like this, uh, and, MLB scouts were like, these fans are nuts because the second he took the field, everyone went crazy. But yeah, I think Florida State embraces it, and it's good to see Mike Norvell continue to embrace that. Um, shout out Mike Martin Sr. He played a large role in Jameis as well, uh, and he was a huge advocate of Jameis. And it's nice to see Link you know, kind of take that baton and say, yeah, we're going to give you these opportunities if you want to. I just love it. I love having two sport athletes. You know, Charlie Ward famously said, if I don't go in the first round of the NBA draft uh, uh, or the NFL draft, I'm going to go to the NBA. And that scared off a lot of GMs in the NFL. But I'm pretty sure he's happy with his decision playing 13 years with the New York Knicks. So I love what Florida State does with two, um, two sport athletes. And I hope we continue it because I do think it is an advantage when the players know and you have the proof of concept to show, yeah, we're not just telling you this. We're going to actually show you these players who've done it and let you do that yourself. I think that's a huge deal. Yeah. It's always been a big deal here. And so I love that we do that. Yeah. And then Miss Jeannie said all the way back to Dion, you know, Dion obviously played. uh, I feel like Dion could have probably played four sports at FSU uh, had the seasons lined up the right way. So, Hey, some cool stuff. Uh, Luke Cromenhoek, who uh, is a, one of the top rated quarterbacks in this 2024 class, current FSU commit. Uh, did a really cool interview with Knowles247 that you guys should go check out. I won't recap that entire thing, but talked about taking on the role of a recruiter for this 2024 class. Um, thought that was really, really cool, and you certainly want that. You certainly want your signal caller and your quarterback to be that leader in the class to attract others to play with him. Um, I've been getting some word that some other schools are really, really interested in him and, and have gotten word that, I mean, he, he put out today that Georgia Tech offered him. I don't, they don't worry me a ton. Um, no. But there's another school in Georgia that, that would worry me if, if they were to pursue pretty heavily, as I think they would worry anybody if they were pursuing any recruit uh, on their uh, commit list. But um, a kid that Florida State got in really, really early on, um, 
has you know Florida State has loved him ever since he you know he's a four star now. Florida State got in when he was a three star, and a lot of people question the take. Oh man, here's a three star two years away. How much is this going to matter? Well, you're about to see how important this uh, is going to be. Uh, I think that uh, you'll see the type of schools that FSU is going to have to compete with to keep him. Um, but it was good to get him back on campus. It was good to get him back on campus with, we mentioned Camden Fryer and a lot of other commits and targets for the Knowles. Obviously, Cam Davis, uh, five-star, was on as well. And I think it's important for Florida State to kind of keep that relationship. And, you know, to me, I, you know, from, from what I've heard, Luke's pretty pretty solid, as solid as it gets, you know, right now. But Florida State needs to go out and continue to win and continue to back it up on the field and continue to prove that proof of concept. Um We've seen quarterbacks that have been super committed uh, until all the way down the stretch, and then they end up with another school. That's happened to Florida State. That's happened to other schools. That's not just an FSU thing. Um, obviously, different circumstances, but just two hours away, uh, yeah. Florida had a situation uh, kind of similar to that as well. So I really like Croman Hoke. I really think he's going to be pretty elite. I know we've got some other young quarterbacks on campus right now with AJ. I know that Brock gets to – is uh, is there and you know somebody else that we're gonna consider for the future and somebody that'll kind of battle it out. But I don't know that Luke's a day one guy, but I do think that he's somebody that is going to do a lot of good in, in Garnet and Gold if he if he sticks it out and ends up signing with the Knowles. So cool to see him. Cool to see the legacy Camden Fryer on campus. Richie, you're a little older than me. Do you remember watching his dad play much? So not really. I, I I know all the highlights. I know the big touchdown catch against Miami on the first play of the game, I believe it was. But I, I do not remember watching him. And I probably did. Because I'll say I've been watching Florida State games since at least 93, 94. Didn't really start remembering him until heartbreak in 98 against Tennessee. And the next year, you know, made it all that much better when we beat Virginia Tech. But I do not remember watching his father but I definitely know the highlights and know he was a, he was a dude. Yeah, no, he was, and he's all, I know Miss Jeannie's in here watching. I know that she's a, she was a huge Matt Fryer fan. I know my guy, Alan is a big, big <laughs> um, fan of Camden and he's a stud. I mean, if you go find his highlights, if you go pull up Camden stuff, like he's every bit of a four star and he's really, really talented. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to be, He's going to, I mean, you know, being a legacy, that's one that Florida State certainly needs to hold on to. But I do think that that's one that um, should be really, really good for the Knowles. I think we'll do, we'll probably do a full on recruiting video this week, uh, maybe with Zach Blostein of Knowles 247. And so keep your eyes out for that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. We, uh, we won't go as deep into the recruiting here, uh, but I do think that, you know, we will do something like that this week. Where are the five-star recruits at? Well, Florida State had one on campus this weekend. They had one on campus last weekend. And then it sounds like Charles Lester may swing back through again soon. So three in two weeks um, is, is not terrible. Uh, there are only 32 five-star recruits. So, you know, getting three in two weeks is, is not the worst uh, to be on campus. So, um, yeah, Florida, you know, where, where are the five-star recruits at? As bad as Miami and Florida are, they seem to get five stars in for visits and commitments. Florida has one five-star committed. They have not had a five-star sign with them, uh, I think, in two, year, two three years. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, Miami did have a couple this year, so I will give you that. But, yeah, acting like Florida is, is pulling in all the, all the five-stars isn't the most accurate. Let me give a quick shout-out to the Graham Code, thegramcode.com. If you go there right now, you can get the best Delta A products on the market. You can use code DFNS25. That's DFNS, double fries, no slaw, DFNS25 to save 25%. Whether you're looking for gummies, hard candies, wake and bake coffee, they've got a quick mix um, that you can mix in with your recipes or your drinks. TheGramCode.com, DFNS25 to save 25% on all your Delta 8 needs. Um, Richie, let's talk a little draft. Let's, let's transition a little bit from the recruiting weekend, which again, we'll go a little bit deeper into that in another video this week, but a little bit on the draft, Florida state named a winner in the two, four, seven draft declaration update, just based on who's coming back, who Florida state gets back. And we just kind of mentioned them. 
I don't know exactly where a lot of these guys would have been drafted. I do think Verse would have been obviously drafted pretty high. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think Wilson and Trey probably get drafted or are, you know, pickups very quickly into um, into free agency. I think Fabo was like a six or seven. I think Fabo would have gotten drafted. Um, I don't know if Dent does. I don't know if Tatum or, or Kalem were. But I think they would have all made rosters, at least, you know, in, in preseason and stuff. But basically getting every everybody that could have come back, with the exception of Jamie, came back, right? Like Dylan left, but had no more eligibility. Robert Cooper left, but no more eligibility. So like Florida State, a winner just in who they got back on the field this year. Yeah, and I think this is a huge deal because you go back to signing day last year, right? I don't know if Travis Hunter signs with Florida State if the, you know our name, image, and likeness program is as buttoned up as it is right now, but it's a possibility. But I love – we're going to shout them out seemingly every week. Ingram Smith and the Battle's End, what they're doing. They're focused on the roster retention. Guys like Fabo, Jordan Travis – you know, even a Trey Benson, a lot of these guys, if there was no name, image, and likeness, they probably leave. Because even if you end up on an NFL practice squad, you're making six figures, which is a lot more than I made coming out of college. I'm sure you <laughs> as, as well, TJ. And the majority of people not coming out of an Ivy League school. It's been huge. And I, I think Mike Norvell has done a phenomenal job working with Battle Zens. Obviously, they can't work together directly, but basically putting a bug in their ear saying, hey, these are the guys we think can come back. Man, I thought Florida State did a phenomenal job because you are not a preseason top five to 10 team, which a lot of these way too early projections have us as without getting all these guys back. And like I said, you know, a guy like Fabian Lovett, you know, he has a, he has a kid that he needs to take care of. If he's, he's not coming back to Florida State for free. So I think name, image, and likeness plays a huge deal in Florida State is one of the top in the country right now, thanks to the battles and, and rising spear. I, I, I got to shout them out as well. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I think that, you know, getting a lot of these guys back, having them back on the roster is, you know, I, I think, you know, what the, the position that people are in that we're in and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see what the long term is, but I think the position that we're in is, is gearing up for this run and is gearing up for a run in 2023 and making that as special as possible, um, you know. But it, you know, it, people have called it like the Rams. Well, with the Rams, like you don't have to trade picks, right? Like there's no like yeah. draft picks that exactly. you trade. You still get to like build for the future, and that's certainly what they're doing by taking guys out of the portal that can play multiple years and different things. And so, yeah, I, I, I think you got to kind of go all in, right, with your resource allocation and what you're trying to do for 2023. And, and getting this thing rolling again. Um, they're doing it at the right time. And the, the time that they're doing it where they have a top 10-ish NIL backing and support in the country. I don't think they're one, two, or three. Like, I don't think they're at that level. But I do think a top 10-ish NIL backing, doing it while both rivals are struggling, uh, I think it, it really is kind of putting together uh, a lot of good things at the right time. Um, Thoughts on the draftability of those guys that we just mentioned? Uh, Jamie, Gibbons, Coop, McDonald. Do you have any thoughts around where some of those guys may get drafted, if they get drafted, if they get picked up? Uh, saw some really high rave reviews on Cam McDonald. At, was he at the Hula Bowl? Is that what I sent you? I um, so. But seems like seems like he may be climbing some stuff, which would be really, really cool. Uh, tropical Bowl, not the Hula Bowl. You can have a Hula Bowl and a Tropical Bowl. I feel like they <laughs> certainly... Uh, end up clashing there but thoughts on these guys some of these guys maybe getting drafted yeah I, I think jamie has the chance to be drafted the highest and i think he's the maybe the only you know sure bet as far as who might get drafted uh, you know i've seen him mocked as high as the second round which would be awesome for jamie robinson and i hope it happens i think gibbons you'd be foolish not to take a chance on him if anything he's going to be a great locker room guy you need depth TJ, we are Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans, and we saw what a bad offensive line can do to your season this year. Having a guy like Dylan Gibbons, who may not be all pro potential, but step in and just be steady Eddie for you, that's a big deal. Uh, you know, Robert Cooper, I'm not sure if he gets drafted or not. Uh, probably not, but again, he still might get on a practice squad and 
when you're on the practice squad, you're literally one injury away from getting called up to say, hey, we need you this week on our 53-man roster. Cam McDonald's an interesting one to me, man. I think he's a guy that's really good, at least has a ton of potential, and some GM is going to fall in love with him. He'll probably be a, you know, maybe sixth or seventh round pick. He may even go undrafted, but I do think he's going to end up on a squad somewhere and have a chance to play it uh, at the professional level for a few years because I, I do think all the measurables and intangibles are there. And, you know, I, I have so much respect for Cam McDonald because he came in at the lowest of lows and went out on a 10 win team. I'm just so happy for that guy. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Yeah, I see Jamie, like like you said, fourth, fifth round for Jamie. I don't know if the other guys get picked up or not. Um, I think you could see any of them go in the sixth or seventh round. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody shoots up much higher than that, but I do think they all make squads. I think they all make rosters, and then it's on them to it's on them to prove it at that point and and get that deal and get that contract. So excited for them. Uh, way too early look at next year. Okay, so we mentioned some of them, right? I won't. We yeah. won't recap all of them, but Jordan, Trey, Johnny Wilson. I don't. I think Pittman will go to the draft. I don't know if Pittman gets picked up or not, but a name to consider. Um, here's one: If Jaheim Bell goes crazy this year, yeah. I think that's one you got to look at. Robert Scott is one that you absolutely have to look at. Jared Verse. Um, <laughs> say what? Jared Verse. Oh, I was going to do all offense. Okay, so oh, you okay. do defense here in a minute. So I think Robert Scott's one that you got to look at. Yeah. Um, I think if Marie Smith or Big Meech put together really solid years again, those guys could play themselves into being drafted as well. Uh, so you, you know, and then probably the same for Darius Washington. Probably the same for Jeremiah Byers. Like I'm not saying that ten guys get drafted by any means, but I think that those are the ten on offense. Somebody mentioned Kyle Morlock. I think that he could get drafted the next year, right? Like, I think there's going to be too many people to pass the ball around to, and I don't think that he has a insane year this year. I think he has a really good year. I don't think he'll do it. I think he'll be like the next year. Could I think he'll I think he'll play two years at FSU? Is my kind of gun on that. But maybe ten guys on offense, and then so you want to go through defense. Who all could go on defense? Yeah, I mean, you got to think. Jared versus the obvious one. He he could play himself into a potentially a top fifteen pick. Um, Fabo, obviously to Loach Bethune, I, you know, that they're going to yeah. be fringe guys, but they definitely could get up there. Um, you know, Dent, if he has a good year, he's a guy, go. he's a guy that could go to the combine and really show out. Yeah. And again, some GM will fall in love with him in Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus is a no brainer. He's probably a first or second rounder. Yeah. If he has the year, we hope we have. Braden Fisk could go. There's seven possible yeah. on defense. Yeah. When's the last time we had this many draft yeah. eligible guys that we could talk about on a Florida State roster? Yeah. It's been quite the, some time. And and so we just listed 17 people, and we may be leaving one or two out. And and you're right. If Kyle Morlock goes off, he could certainly go get drafted. Yeah. If Dennis Briggs or somebody like that was to go off, they could certainly get drafted. I, you know, so like they're you know 18, 19 ish. Not all 19 are going to get drafted. But you should have 10 guys get drafted next year, right? Like the easy ones, Trey Benson. The Jordan, season we think we're going to have. Yeah. yeah. Jordan, Jordan Travis, Trey Benson, Johnny Wilson, uh, Robert Scott, Jared Verse, Fintrell Cypress, Braden Fisk, Jeremiah Byers. Like there's seven right there, right? Like <laughs> you're going to get a couple more in there as well. So, yeah, it, it's it's been a while since we've been able to do that and list that many guys. But uh, it is kind of fun to uh, – to already talk about it. Let's let's send them out with the national championship first. Uh, but <laughs> at least the then, playoff appearance. Give me some Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. If you win 10 or 11 games, you're going to have more games in primetime, you're going to have more exposure, you're going to have more, more hype. Scouts. You're yeah. going to you're going to have more you, you're people will overdraft you. Like that 13 yeah. team was great, but some of those guys on the offensive line got overdrafted because of how good they were on that entire unit, right? And so that's not to slam anybody on that 13 team. But some of those guys certainly got overdrafted, not, right? Like, not Jameis, not Devontae. Like, those guys were legit. But you play on 11, 12, 13, 14 win teams, you get overdrafted sometimes, yeah. right? Like, you yeah, start with DJ Manuel. So, like, yeah, you want to get out and make more money, like, just win a bunch this year. So, um, 
Had a question in the comments. We'll move on to something else here, but the draft is a fun thing to talk about. We'll, we'll hang out with you guys for a few more minutes and let you get back to this game. Although it's a little bit, it's, it's turning into a little bit of a blowout. Not a blowout, but is Buffalo's really? on uh, life support is is what it seems like. Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow kind of going nuts, up by 14 with the ball and driving in the fourth. So, um, but we did launch something new, which, you know, you guys are in here and I want to try to get some of these questions, but Richie and I have kind of a loaded show. So if you want to make sure your question gets answered, you can always hit the super chat button. There's also an option where you can subscribe on YouTube. Uh, it's similar to our Patreon. So if you're already on Patreon, no sweat, don't feel like you have to do something double, but you can hit the subscribe button. Um, you get a cool little emoji next to your name. You get to use fun gifts in the chat. I know people love that. And we'll do private videos. We'll do shout outs. We'll do stuff like that for the subscribers. We just launched it last week. So there's no private videos or anything just yet. But if you want to support, that is a great way to do it. Um, appreciate you, Steve. Appreciate all those commenting below. Richie, some jersey number changes. Um, people are really excited about this. This is not something that I feel like is my... I don't know. It's not something that I feel like is my biggest uh, my biggest interest. But people like this, so here we go. Um, Akeem Dent to number one. I know that number one at Florida State is not the same as it is at Florida where that number is just like so wholly regarded and stuff. But he's an upperclassman. He's put in his time. He came back. Yeah. Akeem Dent to number one. I kind of like it. Um, some other interesting ones that you listed – DJ Lundy to 10. You put the little eye emoji there. Obviously, we all know who's worn 10 here and, you know, probably the second greatest linebacker to ever play at FSU and Derek Brooks. Um, Pat Payton to 11. So taking the Jermaine Johnson route there. Tefase takes Robert Cooper's number to 91. Boots taking 45 like Lamont Green Sr. Um, you like the jersey number stuff? I, you know, it, it's fun for me. I'm like you. I don't get overly excited or, or, you know, upset about it, but a lot of people do. So I, I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, yeah, I, th I think wearing number one, you have to be a dude to wear number one. And you I got thought Akeem Dent had a really good season last year. And I'm hoping he takes it to, to the next level because number one has almost been a curse at Florida State when you think about like Fred Rouse, Xavier Lee, and some of those guys. But Akeem Dent, man, he's put in the work. Everyone that every year said, oh, he's a transfer candidate, transfer candidate. And is he even going to finish here? No, man, he stuck it out. And he's he is null through and through. I'm rooting for that guy to have a huge season. Um, you know, Peyton to 11, like you mentioned, the Jermaine Johnson. I I do think that played a role in it. I think he saw what he, he did. made that number pretty, pretty B.A. I don't want yeah. to cuss on here, but absolutely. Uh, to Fosse, <laughs> whatever, you know, he didn't play last year, but it, it's fine. Um, I, I, Whatever number he wants to wear is cool. But I do think it's really cool hearing that, you know, Lamont Green Jr. will wear number 45. I, I saw a funny story in his newcomer interview, how he's like, I, I had some pants in my locker was number 82. I'm like, I don't want to wear number 82. And then he's like, no, actually, I, okay, good. I'm, I am number 45. I just think that's a cool story. We talked to his father on this podcast um, in the past, and I know he is extremely proud. Uh, so I, I'm a fan of all of them. You know, I, I just hope Akeem Dent, you know, take that number one and own it and just be that dude. Be the Jamie Robinson that just left. Because if you play a year like Jamie Robinson just did, you've earned that number one. Yeah, no doubt. So, okay, so fun little thing here, and then we'll move on again. But I uh, did you see – I know you were in the car, but did you see I was streaming NCAA again today? I saw you where I wasn't able to watch any of it, oh, but good. I did see you were streaming it. So we did beat UGA. We went, we beat UGA 21 to six and I forgot I had a dinner. So I was kind of like just running the clock out there. We could have put a little bit more on them uh, cause we had the ball late. But speaking of Akeem, Akeem made a big interception uh, when they were driving late in the game. I mean, they were down two scores, so I don't know if it would have really mattered, but big interception from Akeem. Uh, Hakeem Williams caught the first touchdown of the game. He's going to wear number eight, yeah. but he was, but I couldn't pick number eight for him in the game. Because one, you know, just the once somebody has the number on yeah, defense, defense, you can't. You it's can't just, wear, yeah. it's kind of dumb. So he got. Guess what number he got? Two. He's wearing number two. Let's <laughs> there take that. All right, um, Garden and Gold. Appreciate them for their support. Gardengold.com. I know you guys are ordering FSU gear. I know you're getting stuff. Um, now the holidays have passed. You guys got gift cards. You got different things. Whether they be Visa gift cards or Garden and Gold gift cards. 
Make sure you're shopping at garnetandgold.com. They are the last family-owned and operated local retailer of FSU Athletics uh, and FSU gear in the Tallahassee area. Garnetandgold.com. They will ship to you anywhere in the U.S. Um, if you order $75 or more, shipping is free. And if you use code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W, you get all their great merch, whether it's Nike, Columbia, whatever you are looking for. The, you want that gray hoodie that Mike wears? It's out of stock right now, but when they get it back, you go get that thing for 15% off by using code NOSLAW, N-O-S-L-A-W, at garnetandgold.com. Appreciate them for their support. Richie, is the basketball team rebounding? Not to, Oh, that's a terrible pun, but um, things are looking a little bit better for the Hoops team here lately. It was a good week, and I'm a little upset. I spent six hours in a car today because I really did want to put together a basketball minute. I got home about 45 minutes before we started this, and I just didn't want to half-ass it, for, for lack of better words. I, I wanted it to be good. If this team has another two in a week, I will absolutely have one ready. But yeah, man, they go up to Notre Dame. Notre Dame's not any good. Uh, but that was their first road, first not first road win, their first win away from the TLC C all season long. Uh, and shout out Matthew Cleveland. He broke a, not broke a record, but set a mark on double doubles. I believe it was seven straight first time a Florida State player has done it since 1971. And then yesterday, I was watching this pit game and what a roller coaster it was. Pit comes out, guns blazing. I'm like, oh, here we go again. All of a sudden, oh, we go on like a 20 to two run, run, take a 10 yeah. point lead to the half, and immediately it's erased by a, you know, um, Pitt taking a, a 13 point advantage or not 13 point advantage, but erasing our in, entire lead. I'm like, oh, great. Here we go. Shout out Darren Green Jr., the UCF transfer. Man, he has the best stroke I've seen since probably XRM, maybe Isaiah Swan. He is a pure shooter and 24 points on 7 of 12 shooting yesterday. Hit a huge three down the stretch when it was 65 to 64 to make it 68 64. Florida State comes away with back to back road ACC wins, which is something I did not think I would say three weeks ago. Well, they need to stay hot because they welcome back to back ranked opponents into the TLC double C. I see your shirt over there. Uh, Miami on Tuesday night, and then Clemson on Saturday. I'm taking the fam up to see the Clemson game on Saturday. Just in case they blow that, we're going to go to the women's game the next day too on Sunday morning. So uh, the, the women are, are pretty elite. They, they won their, I think, third ACC game um, by 30 points uh, today with a win over Pitt. So also, shout out uh, the, tennis, the women's tennis team. Our friends over there, Jen Hyde and them, um, won a doubleheader today and won their opener on Friday. So they start the season 3-0. and Richie. There's some talk, and Mr. Alford posted a picture of him. Yeah. Would you go to see? Would you go to see FSU play in Ireland? One hundred percent. Like I'd be there tomorrow. People are like, "Oh, I don't want to go to." No. What? So here's no, the thing. Game. Like, let's go. So my wife is uh, predominantly Irish, and uh, she's been to Ireland. I have not. But man, are you telling me I can go to Ireland, potentially play St. Andrews, and go see the Knolls play and? Uh, when my dad passed, I, I had an ancestor DNA done. I'm 10% Irish, so I, I feel right at home. Um, yeah, it's a no-brainer for me. We, we would absolutely be there. I get why some fans would be like, oh, what are we doing here? But no, man, I would I would 100% be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, no no, no doubts about it. Um, we go to Ireland, like, yeah, like I'm there. I'm not, I don't even think, okay, so like I know international travel is like not, you know, the, maybe the easiest thing, but I don't even think flights are that expensive. Um, flights from Tampa to Ireland. I feel like you can go for not that, not that expensive, right? I don't know. 600 bucks, 500, 500 bucks round trip. Like that's, I don't know. It's not great, but that's like going out to California. So yeah, I'm all about that. Okay. We had some questions. We had some people that keep putting stuff in here. Okay. So let's go through, I'm going to go through some rapid fire questions. Rich, you can take any of these you want if you want, but, um, Pat Sertain, um, like press conference announcement, I don't think he'll have an introductory press conference. I don't think I've seen, uh, like coordinators do, I think sometimes, but I don't believe that he'll have one. I think he'll just be made available for a media session, and that'll be his first time with the media, probably one day after practice. Um, questions on 
um, Jaheim Singletary, the Georgia safety. I've said this probably 12 times, but I know we have new people that come quite often. I don't believe FSU is pursuing Jaheim Singletary. I know there are people on Twitter and everywhere else that try to say like, oh, it's just silent or it's just happening behind the scenes. Ask those people because they must be hearing different things than I am. I don't think FSU is going in that direction. If I'm wrong, y'all come back here and put that right in my face. I think he'd be a great addition for FSU, but I'm not on the staff, and so I can't say that for certainty. But I don't think FSU is really rolling with anything there. You can check with the people that are saying that he is. Uh, I don't believe that that is the direction that FSU is going. I do think that good news is coming soon. I do think there are, you know, you've seen Steve Wiltfong put in a couple of crystal balls, one for a tight end, one for a QB. I think that you've got some things kind of brewing. I know that, you know, from about December 10th until about January 5th, it seemed like we got a commit, we got a transfer, we had signing day in there, we got a new coat. We had something every single day. And so now it's been like two and a half weeks. And I think FSU fans are like, man, where's all the good news? I think you guys, I think we were a little bit spoiled for that like three or four week period. Nothing's wrong. Like Florida State's not fall off the map. I promise you, like, there is a lot of good stuff coming. I think you will see the fruits of this labor, the, the fruits of these elite recruiting weekends back to back to back. There's another one next weekend, and it has nothing to do with me taking, um, you know, those class of 2036 kids up there. But uh, I do think that uh, those, you know, you, you'll see some good stuff coming out. And then any chance the schedule leaks before the 30th? The schedule always leaks before the 30th. Yeah, that stuff always comes out like a day or two before. So, you know, you'll see people confirm, you'll be able to piece it together because people will confirm this game. Like the Florida State Clemson game will get confirmed. And then the Florida State Miami game will get confirmed. And then Clemson will play somebody else. And then, you know, Syracuse will play somebody else. And so you'll know where the games have to be. I think so. You may not know the full schedule, but we'll certainly do some kind of a reaction when that drops. It'll be a week from Monday. So not this Monday coming up, but a week from Monday. Uh, for sure. Hey, if you guys watched, if you guys enjoyed this, you can always utilize the super chat function. You can also utilize the super thanks function if you're watching later. And you can also subscribe to the YouTube. Not only can you subscribe, but you can join the community in which we'll give you shout outs. We'll give you priority for getting questions answered during the show. We'll also start doing private videos. So check out those options that we have for you. Um, Richie, any shout outs or anything before we get out of here? Um, not, no shout out, shout outs to the breeder that, uh, had us, let me see her. I just, I just have to show off this, this, this cute little girl. Look at that. That shout out is to Charlie here and, uh, yeah, love her and go Noles. <laughs> here you go, man. Um, I'll give a shout out to William. Looks like William just did a, a super chat. Harlan, if you want to throw that in there. Do you have a touchdown, Florida State? Touchdown, FSU! Big shout out to William. William, we tried to answer a bunch of William's questions today, so I'm glad that he super chatted us. Uh, big shout out to, I think it's been, when was it? Uh, I want to get the number of the number of years right. Uh, it's can you believe it's been 17 years? Uh, but when Kobe scored 81 points in a I game, obviously rest in peace to the GOAT. But I – okay, here, Richie, I'll ask you this. And obviously, like, I'm going to have this answer. But I think that's the most impressive single, like, performance by, a, by an athlete ever. Like, I think, it's, I think it's more impressive than Wilt's 100. So, like, if somebody wanted to say Wilt's 100, though, they can have that one. But I think 81 points in a game is, like – like, you know, Peyton threw seven touchdowns or this guy's caught for 300 yards or something. But, like, 81 points in the NBA game to me is is my, like, my high. Like, I don't even think that there's anything that I could, like, in a single sporting event. It's just the most ridiculous thing I can even think of. Um, so, shout out 17 years ago today, Kobe scored 81. And I, I just, I don't even know what you put up against that. I don't even know, what, like, what gets close. So, I mean, again, if you want to say Wilt's 100, that's one thing. But, like... I don't think anything, you know, like nothing else compares. So anyway, shout out Kobe. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we're strictly talking professional, cause there's some ridiculous college numbers out there. 
Um, and this might be more of an emotional play, but I think Brett Favre throwing four touchdowns on Monday Night Football two days after his dad died was a, a phenomenal performance. I'd put that up there. But I can't think of an individual performance in any sport. I'm sure there's ones that people will debate and say, what about this, this, this? But yeah, I remember watching Kobe do that in high school. My parents let me stay up late to watch the end of that game. Um, who, who was that against? Was that against the Raptors? Mavericks? Jalen Rose, Raptors. Yeah. Raptors, okay. So yeah, I remember watching that game live and I'm like, wait, he's got 70. Because I played high school basketball, so I, I watched all the NBA games. Wait, he's got 75. Wait, 81? Ah, uh, man. But uh, honestly, I might say Kobe's final game that you were at, TJ, was more impressive to me than that just because of how that fourth quarter went. I cannot imagine what yeah. it was like being at that game. Yeah, I mean, that one was nuts. Um, Annie obviously had no like 81 was certainly during his prime. And that yeah. 60 there at the end was, you know, he, he had no legs left. What a lot of people don't know or, or maybe don't remember because it has been almost two decades, the Lakers were down by like 20. Like, it wasn't just like the Raptors were terrible. Like, he had to, like, bring them back. I mean, he had a stretch where he hit, like, five threes in a row or something. And then L.A. ended up winning by 20. But, yeah, just kind of a crazy one. That gets my shout-out for the day. Um, other than that, I don't think I have a lot. I think we're good. Again, if you watched, if you listened, hit the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs-up button. Um, looks like the Bengals are up by uh, 17 now. Bill's driving. But I think this one might be... This one might be over. Might eight be minutes over. left. I, you never know. I like Joe Burrow, though, so I'm good with this. So, All right, cool. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks to our guy Harlan in the background, getting everything done for us, getting all this stuff set up and rolling. We will talk to you guys soon. Thanks a ton. Go Knowles.